Well, hello there, Document Geeks. Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers, and in this video, I'm going to take you through the process of creating placeholder frames. So if you've been involved in any kind of uh, publishing project, you've no doubt been in a situation where you're really hanging on until the last minute for someone to supply you an image. You've done everything you can, you've built your layout, and then they supply the artwork, and you've then got to start moving all your content around to accommodate on a page or on a spread. Really frustrating. How do we put ourselves in a situation where we say, yeah, do you know what? I'm gonna have an image, it's not here now, but that's the space it's gonna occupy. When it arrives, that's the space I will fill with that image. Well, we can do that with placeholder frames. I have ominous empty space on the right-hand side page in here. Now, I'm gonna zoom into this just so we can see it a bit clearer. I am, uh, in theory, waiting for someone to supply me an image that will go into this area here. You can see I have the grid lines on the screen, so I've got multiple columns of five on this particular page, and I think it's about seven rows in here. I'm going to stick to the grid. Notice that we've got lovely equal gutter spacing apart from each of these elements in here. So I'm, I want to stick to the grid system, um, but I, I don't want to create a box because if I go to the rectangle tool, that will generally always create an element that has print characteristics on it. So the safer thing to do would be to use what looks almost identical, which is the rectangular frame tool. And if I actually click and hold down on that tool, it, it replicates the other shapes you have inside of InDesign, except these have X's inside of them. These are placeholder frames made with no printable characteristics. So if you do find that you, for whatever reason you don't fill that frame, you won't get punished for it, as in you won't leave behind a box that's got a, a black outline around it, which has no relevance for your layout. It is invisible, so to speak. So if you don't fill it with content, then all you're going to have is an empty space in your layout. I'll click on the rectangle frame tool. And then it's a case of saying, how much space do you want to afford the image that you're waiting for? So if I position my cursor up here in the grid, click and hold down the mouse, keep it held down and drag across. I'm going to drag across all three columns here and down two rows and it will snap to those lines. What you will find is that if you need to create a full bleed image, so it runs off the edge, then I can't, because I've got no guides, the guides will end at the edge of the page in here. The guides don't extend off the edge of the page. I can't snap to them. So trying to get an accurate height for your placeholder frame is quite difficult. I would suggest that don't do that. Just drag out to get the height right first. Let go of the mouse where you have got grid lines and where you can snap to naturally. And then you can switch to your selection tool hover over the middle right hand handle in this case and drag it out and then actually snap to where you do have something which will be the red bleed line around the outside that's the way you can get those those widths and heights nice and consistent um, and you utilize a, a line a, a grid or a, uh, in this case the bleed and snap to it so we, we have a place all the frame there and it will literally if i go to the view menu uh, up here and choose fit spreading window it will sit there and it will do nothing until you fill it with either text or images you could even put a plain color inside of there as well or a gradient if you wish to but it's just sat there waiting for content to be put inside of it and the usual kind of thing then if i go to file and then choose place when the image does turn up then you can pick it so if i go here to uh, pick one of my images let's go for this beach shot here and then i will click on open I can hover over that placeholder frame and then I can left click on it like so. It drops the image into the frame at its supplied size. So it'll probably appear in that frame quite big on, on, on many occasions. And if I go to the window menu, I can then go down to the properties panel and I can choose under frame fitting options to fill frame proportionally. And there we go. It will make that photograph adhere to your width and height of the frame there, leaving no gaps at all and you have your image then ready to go, but you have then accounted for that space so that you're not at the very last minute thinking, oh, I forgot about the image that someone's gonna supply and there's no room for it. I'm gonna have to juxtapose and change this whole layout. You may not have time to do that accurately. And of course, when you're rushed, making mistakes is gonna be bad. So place all the frames, they're good. You can account for space in your layout and then fill them when you are ready to. Thanks for joining me, folks. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget, you can subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to miss any videos in the future, you can hit the alerts button on this page as well. And anytime new content is posted, you'll know about it. Until next time, farewell, folks.